Welcome back to another episode of the North Star Takes Podcast. I'm Bailey Paulicki. He's Jacob Liberta. We're a Minnesota sports podcast, so if you're a Minnesota sports fan, please hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. And if you're a Wild fan, smash the like button on this video because the Wild are on the board in the playoffs, uh, not just with getting a win, but even goal scoring. We finally scored a goal, and the goals came in bunches in game two as the Wild beat the Blues 6-2. to two. Um, this game was never really that close. We got up 4-0 basically within the blink of an eye. It was 3-0 after one period, and then Eric Snett comes right out at the start of the second period, gets that fourth goal, and then uh, the Blues kind of punched back a little bit. There was a long stretch of play there where the Wild were kind of on their heels, and the Blues were forced in a lot of pressure, and the Wild were taking dumb penalties once again. But uh, the Blues got within two, and then just a fantastic two-on-one rush by uh, Kaprizov and Zuccarello as Kaprizov buries it in the back of the net. And then, uh, you know, the rest is history. After that, Kaprizov added another empty netter to get his hat trick, which it was insane because Eck, Eck, Eck had the hat trick and then his goal got overturned due to an offsides. And then literally like t- uh, 20 seconds later, Kaprizov gets his hat trick empty net goal. So, uh, I mean, what was your – we didn't we weren't able to catch the whole game last night, but what was your uh, main takeaway, I guess, from just a resounding comeback win for this wild team? Yeah, I think it's a huge sign that they can overcome adversity. I know everybody was probably dogging on them. I mean, everywhere you look after that game one performance, you know, come out that flat on your home ice and just get pummeled by a division rival like that. Like that never yeah. uh, leaves a good feeling inside you. So it's nice that they responded and in the way they did. Like it wasn't – there was no doubt about it probably from the beginning. I know – well, I shouldn't say from the beginning. Once it got to the middle of the first period, because right. it got to the point where they didn't have any shots on goal, but finally got the first one that happened to be a goal. And then we were off to the races. The crowd was into it. The team was starting to vibe again, like they had all season. So mm-hmm. I think this is a great step in the right direction as far as the momentum goes. And I just feel like you got to win one, one of the two in St. Louis and get this back to two, two. So then you're back with home ice and then you feel pretty good with a team that plays very well at home. Yeah. And all, th- I mean, all things considered, that would be, fantastic and the wild do have a good chance of doing that because st louis has some major injury issues on their defensive uh on their defense and um you know basically three or four of their top defensemen are out with injury right now or questionable at the very best so um definitely an opportunity there to take advantage but i just thought you know overall the wild were much more aggressive in this game they weren't playing you know they kind of came out like you said timid playing not to lose zero shots through half the first period is pretty unacceptable but we, we kind of talked about that um, after after game one where, you know, they just needed one goal to go in and then the floodgates were going to open because in game one, they were actually pressuring pretty good for a while. They just couldn't get anything in the net. And now that the floodgates have opened, they scored six goals. I mean, hopefully that doesn't run them dry for this next game. But um, we exposed you so a little bit. He wasn't able to stand on his head here in game two, which was good because, I mean, he's not that fantastic of a goalie. Uh, Fleury had a stronger bounce back game, including the, our defensemen even too. It was just a much better defensive game overall. Um, Fleury cleaned up the rebounding a little bit, but at the same time, the defensemen were there for the rebounds he did give up. So I really, I, other than just, you know, some of the penalties we had once again, where just, it doesn't seem like we're thinking when we're taking these penalties. Um, I really don't have any complaints from last night. And I think obviously the big the big thing to me is our superstar finally, you know, he showed up, he got a hat trick in a playoff game, first ever hat trick in a playoff game in wild history. Um, Eric Sinek has proven, we talked about this after game one, how he's just a playoff type player. I mean, he, he shows up in the big moments and it's, it's weird too. Cause it seems like every year he starts off the year really strong. He's the hottest player on the team. Then he just kind of fades as the season goes on. But then when the playoffs come back around again, he's right back up at it. It's like at the start of a new season for him and he's, ready to roll again so i don't know if it's necessarily like a more of a motivation or maybe it's just his play style that's more advantageous in the playoffs but uh he's been very impressive to me as well yeah absolutely i mean this guy was the best in on our team in that vegas series last year and it's been no different so far this year i know he got that hat trick taken away from him and also uh those poor fans throwing their hats in the ice yeah. and then of course get the challenge out there oh the goals reversed so it's like i was all for nothing mm-hmm. so at least at least the free soft one happened pretty Pretty quick after that, like you said, it was like 20 seconds or whatever it was. So, I mean, yeah. good for that. But uh, going back to Eck here and reeling him back in, I think that's that's huge, especially for a guy that's going to be around here for a long time, just knowing that you have that 
on your team, just that steadying force. Guy yeah. who can play both ways. I think that's that's really what helps him translate to the playoffs is that I think he's one of the best two-way forwards in the game. Like, mm-hmm. I know our uh, good buddy John uh, was just on on the last episode of this. He uh, he was telling us how he thinks Eck is going to be better at Koivu, and you have to agree. I think Koivu, I think it just it's more of a uh, – really first to do it in team history, I guess. It's like a, yeah. there, there wasn't a high bar to clear in the first place. And now Eck, I feel like, is going to take his career new new heights that Koivu didn't reach. And then when you kind of think of it from that perspective, it's like, well, Koivu then, he got his number retired. So what does that say about Eck? But, right. So in some, in some respects. But again, it's a different different areas, different context. But yeah, I, I think I, I'd have to agree with our, our friend John that he'll eclipse what uh, Koivu did for this wild team. Yeah, and it's, you know, they're, they're, they're almost similar style, like they're bigger, slower dudes. But at the same time, Eric Sinek is super skilled. I mean, he had, he set a career high in goals this year after setting a career high in goals last year. Um, so he's, he, you know, he's improving every single year. And I remember when he first came up, he was just, he was super rough. He was basically a scrapper, more of a defensive forward. But mm-hmm. yeah, his, his game has improved so much on both sides of the ice. And yeah, in terms of skill, it's not even close. I think he's way more skilled than Miko Koivu ever was, especially around the net. Yeah. Um, not not to disc Koibu or anything, but yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, I I agree with John as well. I think Erickson has a very good chance of being better than or having a better career than Koivu did. But um, man, Kirill Kaprizov, man, what a difference a superstar makes in, in having a in having a superstar in a, in a playoff environment like this. Yeah, they can just go out and win you a game like that. That's just incredible to watch. I mean, he had those three goals. It's like just. I don't know. It leaves you at a loss of words, really, just because it's like we never have had that in team history. So I mm-hmm. think it's amazing that we're there, and you don't feel like it's just a this year thing either. Like Kaprizov's gonna be around for a while, so it's not gonna be just this postseason, but hopefully many future postseasons to come. And this is just the beginning. And I think there's there's some uh, serious. Obviously, it starts with him, but I think there's some serious talent that goes beyond him too in this roster. That's just worth getting excited about, yeah. and we're starting to think about a deep playoff run with. So. I, I can't say enough about how excited I'm about him leading the charge and hopefully taking us to new heights, hopefully past the first round, at least for the first time since 2015. Now, let me ask you this. Does this win ease your mind a little bit about the Wild at least being competitive in every game from here on out? Oh, absolutely. I think I was very concerned after game one, we just came out flat like that. It's like, how do you pick yourself up after a, an abysmal performance like that, especially in front of your home crowd? Like, that's just really – Leaves you with the sour feeling. So yeah, yeah, for them to respond the way they did and bounce back and even the series up. So now you just go to St. Louis where you just gotta feel like you gotta win one of the two and then you're in, in a good spot. Yeah, I feel leaps and bounds better than I did yesterday at this time. So I'm um, I'm uh, really excited where this is going. We just gotta keep keep the momentum going. It's just it's gonna be another topsy turvy series, just like the Wolves series just was. Sure. We're gonna get we're gonna get a bit, you know, right back to back. So it's gonna be it's gonna be crazy to see how this plays out because Really, the Blues are a really good team. Like, this is easily a team I could see winning the Stanley Cup this year. The Wild are, too, though. And, yeah. you know, that's why it's crazy to think one of these two teams is going to be eliminated after the first round because um, you could realistically see both these teams winning. And I think both of them could definitely hang with Colorado, give them a run for their money. So um, before we wrap up here, let's talk about the goaltending situation. Obviously, we already kind of mentioned Fleury bounced back. He played a lot better. Um You'd have to imagine they're probably going to stick with him now that he's playing good. I mean, do you see any sort of scenario here where Cam Talbot gets a start in these upcoming games? I feel like the only way Talbot plays either if Fleury gets hurt or if Fleury just has an awful game, like just you can't watch it anymore. I think that's the only way Talbot gets in just because Dean Epson's reasoning for throwing Fleury out there is just that he's got the three Stanley Cups and there's uh, – Really, no way fans or butts about that because it's like yeah. he's a proven winner, so they're going to roll with him. So I think it would take a lot for him to get taken out of the net. What do you think? Yeah, I agree with you. And of course, if either scenario happens, that's obviously horrible for the Wild. And then you got to yes. throw Cam Talbot in after not playing for at least three games here. I'm, yeah. just, I'm just really surprised because I figured when they, they started Flurry a couple games in a row at the end of the season, then they gave Talbot that last game against uh, Colorado. Mm-hmm. And I thought for sure that was going to be a tune-up game for Cam Talbot to get him ready for game one. But um, so far, I am I would be willing to bet Fleury starts game three. So through three games so far, no Talbot yet has really surprised me. I kind of – I figured at the least they'd go with their goaltender rotation unless Fleury just blew him away in game one. 
But um, yeah, I think I think you're right. Dean Evison basically says this dude is Mark Andre Fleury. Like we have a legend here, a legendary yeah. goalie, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna ride him as much as we can. Yeah, absolutely. And I also want to point out uh, this is kind of stemming away from the uh, goalie conversation, but kind of thinking something that came to mind last night that really stuck out to me was that we scored on our first two power plays. I think yes, that was huge because yeah. because of how shaky our power play has been this year. It was nice to see us. Uh, really take advantage of those opportunities when they were there. And I think that played a huge part in getting us that win last night, got us off and running. That's a great point. And the penalty kill was pretty good too. I think yes. St. Louis St. Louis had one power play goal, but mm-hmm. um, even though we did take some stupid penalties, I can't remember. I think they had four or five power plays. Yeah. And they only scored one time. So, um, yeah, definitely an upgrade in the special teams department. Definitely better defensively with the defenseman and with the goalie. Um, basically everything that let them down in game one was drastically improved for game two. So um, quick, quick thought here before we uh, take off, what Mm -hmm. is your prediction for game three? Do you think that they win game three? Honestly? Yeah. I think they ride the moment in that game two win. I think it was so resounding that we're going to come out firing and I think we'll come out on the attack. And I think as long as we score first, I think that's the biggest thing for us. And like, I'm pretty sure we're undefeated this year, or at least we didn't lose a game in regulation we went into the third period of the lead. So I think it's not, not playing from behind. And I think that's that starts with scoring first. So I think that's yeah. the most key thing. And I think coming out the momentum in the game two win, I don't see why that would stop in game three. Even though like the blues would be juiced to play for their home crowd, I still feel like we, we're gonna have some good energy too. So I, yeah. I think we're gonna take this one. Yeah, I agree with you actually. And especially given the injuries on St. Louis's defense, I just yes. think I think the wild are gonna be able to take advantage of that. And uh, yeah, that crowd's going to be hyped, I'm sure, for that you know that first little while. But if if the Wild can find a way to score first and silence them a little bit, exactly. um, that's going to be massive. So that will do it for this edition of the North Star Takes podcast. Please be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Uh, give us a follow on both Twitter and Instagram, and let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. What did you like more about the Wild in Game Two? Uh, Where do you see this series going now? And just any other thoughts and observations you guys have, uh, leave them in the comments. So until next time, thanks for watching.